Hi, it's Native Robin again, and today I have actually a video that's a little more fun, uh, not so work oriented. That you know, usually I, I'm doing projects around my farm. I bought a 1910 Conservo steamer. Now this was a, uh, uh, a thing you could buy at the turn of the century. Women used it. And it says in the manual, I found the manual online and downloaded a copy of it. It says you can can anything fit to eat. Let's check it out. Okay, as much fun as I had uh, kind of cleaning this thing up and getting ready to use it, I had just as much fun reading in the Conservo manual written in 1910 because it really expressed the views of the woman's role in the home. Uh, the way they thought about preparing food, their, the importance of it, and the convenience of having a steamer. So let's look at the actual Conservo itself. So the Conservo is made of tin, and it comes with two doors, two doors on it. Yeah. There you go. I'll take that out. It's got two doors with the removable door shelving in it. Um, I'm actually going to remove two of the shelving for the canning that we're going to do. There, so uh, in this I can get seven quarts on each shelf or nine pints. So that's an incredible amount done at a time when I can only get seven quarts in a pressure cooker and it takes you know you got to get up to temperature you got to process it then you got to let it come down so the features of this is a copper bottom now I shine that up it had a beautiful patina a patina to it but I'm not gonna sell it I love this thing now it also features something that's kind of unique on the back there is a tube that goes down inside, all the way down to the bottom. All the way down the back and into the bottom. Now, it goes into the water, but you fill this bottom with water, and it has, in the tube, a whistle. So what happens is, if, it gets, if the water gets below the bottom of that tube, it'll start whistling and letting you know, hey, you need to throw some more water in there. <laughs> kind of a fun feature. Of course, being in 1910, not plastic handles, cool wood handles. Gotta love that. And there is a hook in the middle here that sticks down. It's uh, retractable. Here. Right up here that I can uh, say you want to hang a ham in there and steam it. But that's the Conservo. It has these, has pretty good thick doors on it. So I'm going to fire this thing up. Now uh, we'll talk more as things, as it gets up to temperature. I bought a oven thermometer just to see how warm does it get. So let's try it out. Okay, so I got this gallon uh, container of water. I'm going to see how, how well it fits in there. Uh, looks like a gallon's about right. And we're going to fire up the... Okay, I'll leave it on high for now. And I got a little oven thermometer I'm going to put in here and we'll let this thing get up to temperature now it's I, I'm checking the time let's find out how long it takes to get up to temperature now these handles you push it in and then turn it and that locks it into place very simple design so it's been like 20 minutes and it's up to 175. Still, you don't see it bubbling and stuff, so it's... I did turn the gas down a little. 
I'll turn it down to about halfway because I hear it rumbling in there. I'm curious to see what I'll have to turn that on in order to maintain the temperature. Okay, so in the manual it says you can can anything fit to eat. And they often show pictures in there of say on the bottom shelf you had corn on the cob and a meat dish and a side dish and you cooked your whole dinner in the bottom while you were canning something in the top. So that was kind of a cool idea. I'm not going to do that today. But I am going to load this thing up. There's no sense and one of the things they stress is you can do all your canning on one burner and they talked about the economy this is 1910 talking about the economy of using only the gas for one burner to do your canning and if you're like me and you've done canning in the past and you've got all of these burners going jars getting hot water getting hot blanching this doing that and they're a big advocate of cold packing so that's what we're going to do today because the the actual they don't refer to it as canning it's sterilization because they're not pressure canning and they're not water bathing they say they're sterilizing the food and the jars all at the same time so the the the, the time in the cooker might is like two to three hours on some of these things but you're on one burner. I have a feeling once it gets up to temperature, I just got to keep a slow boil going. And I mean, really, is the, I'm really looking forward to this. So what we're okay. So what I'm going to can today is I was in Meyer, and they had uh, some organic cabbage, organic carrots. Now it already looked like the apocalypse had already happened. I mean, it was slim pickings. So I went ahead and went down and got me some. Uh, I'm out of uh, dried red kidney beans here, so I went and got, went to get some of these, limit two. So I got two packages. So I'm going to process these, get them into jars, and uh, then I'll just top off everything else with the red kidney beans. So uh, uh, there's, the video really isn't about how I get them into jars, and so I'll get them into jars and then I'll show you how we process them. Okay, so after I shredded two heads of cabbage, it turned it out I had about a dozen of these pints. I like pints because I'm single. I don't really want to open a whole big quart of something that might go bad. And I ended up with six uh, pints of carrots. Now in the manual, it says they both have to process for um, two hours. So that's great. And if I have to add water, it's okay if the boil comes down, just add a little bit of time to that. You cannot, it states, over sterilize the jars. So if I let them in for three or four hours, it wouldn't matter. Once they're good, they're good. So, now it's 200. Oof. It's, it's 212, 215 degrees. And where I'm at, that's as good as boiling. So I'm going to add these carrots. And then I'm going to add slaw. Looks like my water really hasn't gone down that much and it's probably been on here for it took me a while to get all this ready so uh, probably about an hour I mean it was up to temperature in 30 minutes and I turned the oven clear down to low now, now since I've just opened it up I'm going to turn it back up a little bit get it going real good and then I'm going to dial it back down to low and let it just run now for two hours so I'm setting my clock, I've got it, be back in two hours. Okay, so once it got up to temperature and after I loaded that thing, it was kind of, uh, it took it about 20-25 minutes to get back up to temperature because every all the contents of the jars were cold. 
So anyway, I've had it down on two, which is almost as low as it goes for the last hour and a half, almost two hours. And so I'm, I was getting a little bit nervous about how low was the water on the inside because it said, boy, don't ever let it boil dry. Okay, so it's been in there. It's got plenty of water in it. And you can see the contents of the jars is boiling. So I think we're good for a little bit yet. Well, it's been in there about an, right at the two hours. But I'm going to leave it in there just a little bit longer because I'm a nervous Norris since the first time I've ever used this gizmo. And I want to make sure that everything's going to be good. I did lose a little temperature when I first loaded it. I'm going to leave it go for another 20 minutes. Then we'll take them out. So hang on, we're, we're almost done. Okay, I believe it's time. Let's see what we got. Okay, so not completely sure how to go about this, but that's the sauerkraut bubbling away in there. Here's the carrots. It's bubbling on the inside, so it's been boiling for a couple of hours. I want to see just how close was I to getting that whistle to come on. <laughs> oh, it's well down into the water. Okay, so I let it run. By the time I got it up to temperature, then I got it loaded and had to let it come back to temperature. I made sure everything was good. The, the canning book that in the manual says two hours on sauerkraut and carrots. And uh, I, it was probably three hours total getting up the temperature. And, and honestly, the water level only dropped about a half an inch. So, I mean, I could have went another couple of hours easy without being too short on water. So I, I used a gallon jug of water and I think as long as I use that I can go two or three four hours easy and not have to worry about being too low on water. But anyway I wanted to kind of go over a few things in in the in the manual that I just found fascinating. Okay first off this is the reprint of the Conservo manual and I would like to invite you to go to my website nativerobin.com there's nothing to sign up for or purchase or anything but if you scroll down just a little bit on the site there's a PDF of this that you can download for yourself it's just a it's not for charge or for sale you can just get it you can also read it there's a PDF reader built into my website I just have the site because it's a handy place to to show things. Now, now I sold insurance for years and one of the things they used to always tell us is have third party uh, material that backs up what you're trying to tell the client so that you can is because the old adage was if it's in print it's true. You know I read it in the newspaper it has got to be true. It was in the Reader's Digest. It's got to be true. So the same thing holds with this old manual. You know, so what they've done is they've placed uh, old magazine and newspaper articles from women that have wrote testimonials about the Conservo. And what's, what's really amazing in here is they talk about one lady said that she kept a journal for three years every time she bought meat how much it was and how much she bought and she said within three years she determined a trend and she could see hey in this month of the year the local farmers were swapping out the hens in the hen house that were slowing down on eggs and selling the old hens dirt cheap 
And she said, you know, you could even take an old rooster and put it in that thing and steam it for an extra hour and it'd fall off the bone. So she got in her mind where she knew the meat, different meats would be cheaper at different times of the year. And she considered it part of her duty as a homemaker to save the family money and to only buy the meat when it was the most affordable each time of the year. So it's so funny that now in 2022, we're talking about, hey, buy things when they're on sale, buy in bulk, and then you never run out and have to go buy it at retail, especially during this price sensitive time that we live in. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the Conservo. I certainly did, and I'm going to use it some more. Uh, honestly, I will. And go to my website, nativerobin.com. Download the manual. It's just fun to read. There's story after story in there, and it really gives an insight on how women of the day thought in, in 1910. <laughs> so, anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope you subscribe to my channel because there's always something going on at the farm. Until next time, this is Native Robin saying, Happy Trails!